Hello and welcome to the Impact Dynamics Podcast. I'm Andy Little. I'm Plushy. And uh, my name is Rusty. <laughs> Tonight we're talking about how to play six at the Burris Cold Steel Open. And also that Josh drove into a stony pole. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Match director, mate. Match director. Gems the powder, thanks. <laughs> I hope that's enough. We need your vote. Now we've caught up to where we are on the podcast. All right, go on back. Roll the outro. <laughs> well, 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 there we go. Big re- big re- revelations at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Well, how mm. much gin have I had this? <laughs> the <laughs> truth. The truth. Not yes. enough. How really? are you, gentlemen? How are we all? Very well. Very good. Well. Josh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. No, recovered. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I know. <laughs> from, from what, the stubby pole or the match? <laughs> the pole. We, we've had a lot going on. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but let's kick off with our round count because that will expose a little bit Ooh. of what we've been doing. All right. So we now have it written up. I don't know if that's visible on a camera at all. Josh, you can tell me if it is or isn't. It's probably not clear on a camera. Uh, we can see two of them. Okay, that's good. That's yep. a good start. Well, Andy, your name's up first. Let's kick off with you. You are currently yep. sitting on 1,038 rounds yep. for the uh, year. <laughs> that's uh, right. Uh, what what have you been doing? Uh, we had the Burris uh, Cold Steel Open match. We did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I sent about two hundred rounds there, and mm-hmm. then ten rimfire rounds on the side match. Oh, okay. So and that's 110. it. Yeah, yeah. right. So uh, oh, you, hang on. How yeah. many did I say? Two hundred and ten. Yeah, two ten. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you're at twelve forty eight. All right, cool. Uh, Plus, you, I think you're next. Right over there. You uh, it, you ran the Burris Cold Steel Open. It's a bit of a struggle to remember how many shots I took. Wow, how much did you drink? How much brass did you bring back? <laughs> All of it. Good. That's good. How many empty brass? <laughs> <clears throat> that's a good question. I haven't actually counted. Do you know what I did with my range bag? What's that? I put it in my gun room and that's mm. where it is right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to say we put about 100 rounds maybe in practice. Mm. 10 rounds of the side match. So yep. call it 110. 110. Okay. Very good. Uh, Josh, you're up now. You're an even thousand somehow. How did that happen? So, How am I? Oh, yeah. that's oh, good. Yep. Uh, mm. I did 10 during the side match and then I think I did about another – oh, no, I did 20 at the um, Ber- uh, Beretta Dealer Day. So you did 20 there oh. and then you shot five through mine on the mover. Yes. Uh, yes, well. I did. So yeah. what were those numbers? 25. 26 because so you- there was a Stobie <laughs> <laughs> That should count for more than one. That was a solid impact. That was a big target. <laughs> that, was, that was all right. So, uh, my my round count is uh, is less interesting than Stoby Pole. Um, the the scenario was we finished up here last time mm-hmm. and then went to the pub for dinner, and there is a in Josh's defence there is a Stoby Pole in the middle of the driveway, mm. um, and Josh went through the driveway. <laughs> um, yeah, I and, also have a little bit more defence to that. Okay. Because it had rained that night no, and the whatever. road was all glistening. What, what, <laughs> color, what color is the stoby pole, Josh? It is yellow. What and color are the lights in that car park? Uh, amber. Yeah. yeah. Who's colorblind? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. there goes your license. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, I did 160 rounds. I did uh, 60 plus 10 at the uh, Burris Cold Steel Open. Uh, just playing with the mover and then also the rimfire match. And I did about, I think I worked out, I did 10, 10, uh, 10 rounds on a 308, uh, 30 rounds on some handguns, 40 rounds on the rimfire stage with Scott McMillan and another 10 rounds on a, a Creedmoor. Very nice. So I did a total of 160. So I am now, I've more than doubled the amount of rounds I've shot for the year. Good work. I am on, uh, what, 311. Nice. So that's... Uh, that's where we sit now. We'll get those numbers updated. Boom. Sorry, I was going for applause. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Wait. There we go. There we go. Is that to applaud yourself for the pressing the right button? Now it is. Okay, good. Do you have the crashing noise when you hit the stubby button? <laughs> was there no, a, I got nothing. Was there, was there a sound effect that Andy made after you hit it? <laughs> Seems to check out. All right, good. Uh, very good. Um, so we've got some uh, some... Uh, review, a review that came in. Let me find it. Uh, it's amazing okay. they keep coming. This is oh, from <laughs> Savage Thirty Cow. Nothing better to do. I was thinking about writing what? some myself. Oh, you should definitely <laughs> do that. Accounts. Well, I've got a spare one backed up uh, uh, from ChatGPT. I asked cool. it what it thought about the Impact Dynamics podcast. Okay. Oh, that's dangerous. Uh, he told us all about uh, it was a physics show or something apparently, and then I asked for the shooting version, and then we got a review of it. But I will save that oh. for another time. Cool, cool. Because this one opens up an interesting question. Great show. Uh, would love to see more factory rifle recommendations for people new to the sport. 
So, Plushy, what would be your factory rifle recommendation for people new to the sport? This wasn't a pre pre thought out question, was it? Not at all. No. <laughs> for for centerfire or rimfire? Yes. <laughs> both. Oh, right. Well, if you buy a centerfire, you could do both. And <laughs> <laughs> you buy a rimfire, you could do both. <clears throat> so, are we talking production or open here? Probably production. We're talking factory rifle. Let's go with production. Let's go yeah. on the cheaper, more budget friendly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that rules out level. the ticker take ones. You're into mm-hmm. like. Ticker CTR or Super Varmint Territory. Mm-hmm. Um, Bagara's probably squeeze in there, I'd reckon. Just one. What was one? Andy's here ready to How answer a question Isn't this a boring well. segment if we just give an answer and say buy this and not say the why? Well, we have other segments to go on with. But no, okay. No. No, we'll say the why rather so than which, 14 which guns. which one? Which one? Would Choose you? one. I would go a ticker. Mm. Um, mm. Which one? Either a CTR or Super Varmint. Um, he's already probably seized. a super varmint because you can get him threaded or a varmint. You can get him threaded. Mm-hmm. You can change the mag to take a, a decent 10 shot mag, mm-hmm. um, heavier barrel than the CTR. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you're done with it being a production rifle, you can turn it into an open rifle. Mm-hmm. Very well yeah. supported for accessories later on. Pretty much all the chassis are made in ticker inlets. That's mm-hmm. true. And you wouldn't be unhappy with that. You used to run a ticker Andy. I was yep. running one up until the end of last year. Yep. Won a match um, with the ticker, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I haven't won one <clears throat> since. All right, Andy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shot one. Shot one. Uh, yeah, I won, I've never won one. So, um, you know, remember where it's coming from. Yeah. Andy, what's your recommendation for a factory um, sort of entry level gun? Yeah, I'd, I'd very much agree with what Plushy said there with mm-hmm. it, Ticker being a very good platform. Uh, I, st- I still run one. And yeah, it's it's grown with me as I've grown through the sport. So, okay. um, very customizable. Um, the only other advice I give people if you're not, Going down a ticker action mm-hmm. um, because that's one sort of long action uh, that they do. I would just go for a 700 footprint, footprint, okay. Remington 700 footprint. So whether that's a Bagara um, yep. or um, a Remington. So reason being, um, if you upgrade, most of the custom actions will be a Rem 700 footprint. Yep. So you've bought a, a really nice chassis or stock or whatever it is mm-hmm. as you've upgraded it. You can ditch the action into the safe and do whatever you're going to do with mm-hmm. it, and yep. put a custom action in there and keep all your your chassis or your stock or whatever you've mm-hmm. invested your money into. You can reuse it. Yeah, triggers, but, all that sort of stuff will will work. Yeah, and and I'd I'd look into like buying a centerfire for definitely for your centerfire comps, and um, <laughs> that <laughs> glad could you work. narrowed that down. That, mate. Would, that would work well. <laughs> that um, checks out. Yeah, but also you're smart. But also <laughs> look at your rimfire options as well. So if you are if you are going to go like a for tip, your rimfire comp or for your centerfire comp. Uh, a bit of both. Okay. <laughs> but if, you, if you're going to go like a, a ticker for a centerfire, mm-hmm. then you may as well go a ticker for a rimfire because I believe Ooh, they share the same. Well, it just gives you flexibility. But I did speak to someone um, who would, who wanted a, a centerfire and rimfire like sort of trainer. And mm-hmm. I said, you'd probably be better off going a 700 footprint mm. because there's a lot more options in that mm. rimfire op- platform. Yep. Um, and then you can change your chassis, triggers, everything's swappable mm. now. Yeah. True. Mm. Okay. All right. Exciting. Very good. Well, we do, um, just quickly jumping in with some comments. Um, old oh. man Isson has agreed with that and he said a C- ticker CTR would be my choice. It already has a threaded barrel, but mm-hmm. varmint barrel would be better. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. The rules yep. allow for a little bit of modding of a, of a stock to take a, um, a 10 shot mag and threading the muzzle is also, sorry, threading the barrel is also okay to put a muzzle brake on, I think, if it's not already threaded. Yeah, the muzzle brake's no dramas. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And also, just Guy Jackson has commented and said Super Varmint has the heavier barrel contour and comes threaded. That guy would know. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like he just helps set one up. Hmm. Okay. Amazing. I thought, I thought the Varmint had the same contour as the Super Varmint. I think it's just threaded. Um, and I think there's, a, yeah, there's some additional options. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's been a long time since I've sold guns. So, that cool. is, uh, that is uh, we had to Google what the price of a Seiko was today because I had no Sarko. idea. Out of interest, what is it? Because it's been a while. <laughs> uh, it was about three grand approximately, yeah, yeah, depending on model and such. But, yeah, there you go. Delivering high value content all the time. Um, <laughs> Medium value content because that wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's all right. Just wind it back a little bit. Uh, now, we had a challenge. We had a challenge. No. Nope. <laughs> oh yeah, nope, didn't happen. Yep. But before we get to the, before nope. we get to that, actually, no, no, we can we can accuse Josh more uh, of some things. <laughs> <laughs> oh good, oh good. <laughs> we had a giveaway that we'd organised last, and we wanted to hear from you guys about what you named your guns and sent us photos, but uh-huh. we didn't do any posts about it to elicit that response and get mm-hmm. people to. 
post up their photos and information. But Who's job also, uh, Josh has been quite busy. I, mean, I have excuses to Josh, pull out for this one. Yeah, because he couldn't. He had a car to worry about. Are they painted yellow? <laughs> <laughs> he also, he also uh, has been on the road literally for about two weeks. Um, in fact, I think uh, off the road. I mean, sorry. <laughs> there, was a, there was a period where he was no. sort of half on, half off the road. <laughs> <laughs> there was a period he was one with the road. Um, Actually, it was after the last podcast. There was one day and then I was on the road. Yeah, correct. Mm. So uh, Josh has barely with, been With a different car. And focusing on other people's uh, platforms of, uh, of putting content out. So uh, I'll, we'll, give him, we'll give him a side break on that. So all it means is we're extending the competition. So cool. sometime in the next week or so, there will be a post. Josh is frantically writing it down his to-do list. No, he's not. Um, about the competition. So all you need to do is uh, send us in a photo of your rifle, put it in the comments of that particular post or anything, and we all know the name of your rifle. Gentlemen, have you ever named your rifles? I have not. Mm. Never. Would you like to name them now just to make up for a better story? Uh, I thought about my, my new rifle. Mm-hmm. It's like an OG, yeah, it's OG green. It's okay. dark green. I thought about making OD it like green a, or OG green? OG. OG. Yeah. All right. Did I say OD? I don't know. It's close OD to G. is, is another DG. option. It's close. Yep. Um, I thought about like some sort of Hulk inspiration. Okay. Some people have suggested like the Spitfire, like the, oh, the yeah. teeth down the side and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I'm <clears throat> thinking about sort of spicing it up Hulk a little teeth. bit. Hulk teeth. We'll go teeth. with Hulk oh, teeth. That'll work, yeah. Yeah, done. All right. Andy, what are we going to name your gun? Um, I'm more thinking of my old lever action one that I oh, got yes. from a from a relative mm-hmm. and it's really, really rusty. Mm-hmm. So just a rusty stick. <laughs> Okay, we might leave that one alone for a little bit. No, just how long? How long is it? <laughs> Not very long. <laughs> Not very long. A couple of inches. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. All uh, right. Yeah. Uh, not right. as not as big as a steam though. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a hard one for Josh to shake paint for a while. Yellow. <laughs> mm, that's all right. Good. Now uh, we had a challenge. We had a mm. challenge set for the Barris Cold Steel Open. Josh, have you got any video of this? Oh, I have all the videos. Oh, <laughs> Who do we want to start with is Who the question. Who you in charge of the videos? Well, <clears throat> like um, I came back and this was the one thing that I wanted to do. Because I can tell you I lost. <laughs> right. Should we play yours first? You should play mine. You should play mine. That was controversy on mine, I think. Uh, so this was a 10-round stage. Oh, we're, doing, we're back looking at There Josh. we go. go. There again. we go. Cool. So this was a 10-round stage and we had to move between the time. Hey, it's me in the background. It is you in the background. Good. All right. So, th- I mean, this was it, and we had to move. Through. There, was, there were 10 yeah. targets as well. And so it was pretty easy to lose sort of which target you were on. Yep. And that bipod was all over the shop. Can we replace awesome. that? That is horrible, that bipod. Every yeah. match. It, was, it gets worse. Uh, it's there will be a new one on it. Uh, so. But, um, yeah, that was. It's uh, also mounted on backwards, I think. Yeah, see, I, I had some concerns. Is that mounted on about backwards? Uh, no, that looks no. correct. Oh, no, no, I feel like it wouldn't wrong. change the outcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, I think no, it's all right. you're right. No, no, because I came last, it definitely would have changed the outcome. Yeah, I would have been further up. Anyway. Reshoot. Right. No, it looks, it looks like it's in the right way because the spring's on the Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Yep. So I got I got all 10 you shots off, but I missed two of them. I missed two of them. So, and uh, no, I missed one of them and the other one was on the wrong target because I uh. counted incorrectly. So that was all on me. Uh, do we know who came third, Josh? Oh, look, Dave's in with the timer. This guy. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Well, yeah. this guy. Killer. Andy. I can't remember. <laughs> I think it was Someone me. Here. Was that killer? All right. <laughs> let's let's go with Plushy. All right, Plushy, take us through it. Oh, we're we're on the other side now. There's no music. We are. Well, there oh, was no music previously. There's no, there's no <laughs> audio. Wait, no, wait audio. for it. There it is. Oh, oh, hey. You should put some oil in that. <laughs> oh. The yes. bolt is, is this horrible. Is just going to complain yeah. the entire, it's the entire show? It's horrible. <laughs> you just wait. You just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to it. All right. I'm glad you mentioned it, though. Plushy, yeah. you want to take us through it? Keep, keep oh, yeah. No. Like, look at you my, missed that one. Look at my form. It's terrible. One leg forward, one leg back. It's terrible. It was the two guys that are trying to run the match, trying to think about shooting for a bit. Yeah, no, you're all over the shot, man. Yep, definitely. Every time I close the bolt, I can't the rifle because I forget yeah. it's like a 45 degree... Um, <laughs> What do you have to be bolt? You're like, it's not closed. You've got to close it harder. <laughs> close it harder. That'll help the shit. At, about yeah. this point, I started counting from the end because that was closer. Yes. Yeah. And I slightly got that wrong. <laughs> oh, yep, that, was, that was the one. <laughs> and and you like Josh's face? <laughs> <laughs> Josh, that's Josh sitting there going, I'm winning. Yeah. I'm winning. The one. That's the one. Good. So, Josh, are you, yeah. so ex- are you so excited about this because you know who wins? 
I am. Yeah. I am. All right. All right. Slightly biased. Okay, we'll find out. We'll yeah. find out in a moment. Come on, Bushy, hurry up. We've got all day. Time's getting... Dave's put the time right 73, next to you. 73.37. So, right. 37. Yep. I was quicker than that. Did we... Did How many rounds did you hit? Nine. Okay, that's why you That's why you didn't lose. All right, cool. Mm. We got eight. Uh, that was lucky. Who is next? So moving who on. Who came we, second? We have Andy. Oh, yeah. so there we go. So Josh won. That's why he's so excited about this. Anyway, this is a rubbish segment. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah I think so. Let's just cut it short. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's no good. Uh, okay, Andy, take us through your shooting here. Uh, well, I, I, I shot pretty late in the day. So at this stage, the wind had picked up. And, uh, oh, yeah, here we go. I, I definitely, yeah, I definitely made comment that the, the bolt and that action was getting very sticky. Mm -hmm. That bolt in action was, was full of things. Yeah. Yeah, well, what happened about 30 seconds before this? Did you not have the bolt out yeah. and you were rubbing away with your shirt? <laughs> what about the gun? Might, might have been the bolt. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was trying to clean some of the gunk off the bolt so it was a bit slicker. But, um, <laughs> did, yeah. you, uh, did you hit all the targets or did you miss any? I dropped one. Okay, but you were quicker than plushy as yep. well. Okay, yep. I get yep. it. There's the timer. We're getting close. We must be getting close. What were you, 73-37? Yeah. Yeah. There's the miss. Yeah, there's the miss. And it was on the small, like the thin, the thinner chicken. 60-53, but you dropped one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Dave. Dave's got bedside about it. All right, <laughs> so reassuring. moving on with the show. Yeah. Um, well, I heard we, we had some comments or yeah. something, didn't we? Uh, probably. No, probably. There There's probably some things to talk about. So anyway, um, on to the I'd, next. I'd, can't remember though. What was the um, what was the challenge about? I don't remember. What actually. challenge? Sure. What challenge? Stubby pole. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I remember. We, I think, I think Stubby pole won. Whoever yeah. won, whoever. No, go on, Josh. Let's let's watch your round. I know you want to show off your shooting abilities. <laughs> all right, mate. Let's go. Come on. No, they're not that good. Here we go. Oh, he doesn't even remember the gun. Oh, there it is. I haven't Good. even remembered the sound. Look <laughs> yeah, at me go. There's no audio. <laughs> Good. All right, Josh, take us go. through it. Come on. Tell us how good you are. I, pr I think I shot this really on early on in the day. You were so excited to shoot this. I pretty much just to took this. my time and went, you know what? Just make sure you hit everything. At least mm. if you can hit everything, then mm. it's up to someone else not to step up. Yep. That's a good See, mindset for the whole Josh, PRS match. I reckon, <laughs> Josh, was this your first or second or third attempt on this? Because you were, you were rallying everyone. Like, as soon as you hit old 10, you came running like, hey, 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 you need to shoot the channel. We've got that video to do. It is the first time I've seen you so excited about doing something for the podcast. <laughs> this is definitely my first attempt. <laughs> I remember now, because so many things happened, mm. I couldn't see because I took my glasses off. And legit, oh, my yeah. eyes were all fuzzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I took my glasses off and I couldn't see either. Yeah. Yeah, and the Josh right. was hassling me that I had to shoot. Yeah, yeah I remember. Uh, you, you said you would take a few minutes for your eyes to settle and you had about 10, 15 minutes for your eyes to settle. It was not that long. It was. No. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a problem, plus it was too long. Yeah. They, they mm. settled too much that so they weren't <laughs> ready to... It's not a problem I suffer from, but... Eyes <laughs> were too clear. Eyes were too clear. Yeah, it was a, it was a problem. And so they go, they, they've got like the sweet, sweet 30 seconds that they're good, and then, yeah, it's a problem. 81-34. Well done, oh, How slow well. was that? The, you, were, yeah. you were the slowest, but I guess you... It was, but you, you kind of have to hit all the Now, buttons. Josh, do you remember what the, the winner of the challenge got? No, I don't. Because I genuinely don't. I don't no, think it was 50-something oh, seconds. No, no, no. I mean, what are, out of the four of us? <laughs> oh, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about the man himself, Guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. go on. Well done, Guy. Well done, Guy. Yeah, yeah we need a special mention. I learned, I learned yeah. his magazine. Just, no, I mean, oh, I'm not saying okay. it helped, but like it definitely yeah. helped. Special yeah. mention to Hop Along Trent Day. Because uh, uh, what? what did I say? Did I say Trent Day? Day. <laughs> Sorry, Trent. Sorry. <laughs> what? He, he cleaned it in about 60 seconds. Oh, wow. Um, with his foot with in a foot. moon boot. Yeah, mm, yeah. one leg. Sorry, sorry, Trent. I've almost got it well right. Done. Yeah. Well done. Um, <laughs> um, now you've thrown me. So we don't remember what the challenge I'm, I'm going to look it up. Okay, yeah, please yeah. do. Yeah, we'll that would be very good. Uh, while you're talking about that, I am going to go on with what the uh, – no, actually, we need to think of another challenge uh, in the next two weeks. So uh, okay. you guys think of that. Um, who can drive their own car for the next two weeks? Oh, hang on a second. Hey, hey, we, hey, we I all, have another car I can we, drive. Wait, wait, wait. I've still are got we, a car. Are we all going to Tasmania? We are. We are going to Tasmania. Go karting. I think we have a go karting challenge upcoming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go. But that's not. Is that between? Hey, now Josh. And it's looking next? real good for you and me. It's looking very good for <laughs> us. Because we've, we've, we've got automatic you know access to the fast cars. Can't lose this one. The, the we've got another podcast between now and then, though. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay, Let's that's the next podcast. Next podcast. Right, can we just mm. cut yeah. that and we'll get that <laughs> next or, podcast? Or we just go go-karting in the meantime. I don't know. I have time. not got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got shut down real quick. Yeah, sorry, man. We can do like a thumb war after the show or something. <laughs> no, I'm out. Uh, good. Oh, uh, very good. Well, the big the big thing to get into tonight uh, is coming up in a moment. Before we get before we do that, um, Plushy, would you like to make your way over to the the cupboard behind you, the shelves behind you, and choose one of Ooh. our sponsors' products there, whichever one you like, and we can. Uh, Delve into it. Oh, yes, you have chosen well. So for those guys oh, who have been listening to the show for a while, our sponsor, The Bearded Chap, uh, makes amazing beard oil, which Plushy has chosen one of, which we'll talk about in a second, mm-hmm. uh, makes uh, all sorts of uh, products and, and you know, making yourself feel and look amazing. Um, but the owner is a shooter and we like to support shooters and he likes to support us. So, guys, you can go to thebeardedchap.com slash impact or use the code impact. Plushy's just opened up my sealed one of very limited edition uh, <laughs> bottles. So thank Thanks, Plushy. Appreciate that. Tell us which one have you picked there, Plushy? All right, I have I have picked the, uh, the tobacco and vanilla beard oil, the oh, original yes. beard oil. Yep. Um, <clears throat> use three to two. Uh, three to two. How about two to three times per week? Ah, uh, three to two. Either one. All right. Well, uh, well, well I'm, I'm it's currently it. one of those times during the week, so give it a go, oh, mate. And I'll, I want to get you. A, have you tried this one? No. I okay. Not. I'm I'm keen to hear your reaction. Yeah. That's heaps, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy, you going to chuck some in? Did you not hear him say limited edition one of a time? Yeah. Of a... Can I have some? Because it's, I mean, yeah. I, I actually still have this at home and it's it gets brought out on special occasions. Me too. Me too. Mm. Well, this it's is one of a those special ones. occasion. Yeah. This, this is now. Mm. Oh, this. Oh, I can, you can just smell it in the room. Oh, this smells it, pretty. It's good, isn't it, Plushy? That is really good. Yeah. Is it is it really still limited? Because I think I need some. I think they redid they they mm. read uh, I think they re-released it. This right. is one of the originals. This is uh this is one of maybe maybe <laughs> oh, sorry. My eyes haven't settled. <laughs> one of three. No. <laughs> <laughs> one of three that I have. Oh, um okay. it is uh really good. Anyway, that is uh that is the beardedchap.com forward slash impact. Uh, there we go. That's it. Or you could use the code. <laughs> check out, go and check it out. Support a shooter and support us and uh, treat yourself to some amazing beard oil. That is it. Now, the big news. The big news. Apart from Josh, uh, the Burris Cold's still open. Yes. Um, the Burris Cold's still open. Plus, you're a match director. Andy, you uh, didn't win it. <laughs> we, we had that conversation. So I think I went yep. up to Andy and said, thanks for not winning. Otherwise, yeah. it'd be a real awkward podcast. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was just after you told Russell you were shooting really good today. Like, yeah. Thanks for shooting <laughs> shit yesterday. <laughs> how good would it be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so Next time, next time. Um, uh, Plushy, for your mm. first time match tricking a big, yeah. big match, um, how did you find it? Did you know all the things. Tell us all the things. All the things. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's like absolutely exhausting, I think yep. is is fair to say, especially being my first one. Mm-hmm. And then I, I sort of double duty myself because I was determined to make a moving target mm-hmm. um, and get <laughs> it running for the match. You did? So I was doing that in conjunction with preparing for the match, building barricades, organising targets, all of that stuff. Yeah. And I'm really happy with how it came out. Mm-hmm. We had a mover. It lasted like all of – well, it lasted the whole weekend. But yeah. The Friday and the Saturday. Yeah, it lasted well Thursday, Friday, Saturday this, because this will help Andy the microphone. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, and then we had a little glitch in the electronics on the Sunday, and we decided to pull it because it was going to be not fair, not shootable. It it, it, um, it was on the edge of causing problems, which would yeah. become yeah hard to replicate. Yeah, we didn't. Well, we didn't want it to it. affect the result of the match. Yeah. So yeah. we decided to pull it on Sunday, which was okay. We yeah. still <clears throat> we still had a mover, and it's still. Moved mm. and did all those things. I think we worked out by the end of the weekend. I had about fifteen hundred rounds on it. Yeah, or somewhere around there. And, and how many? How much damage did it sustain? Zero. <laughs> well Which done. I, it's a minor miracle, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. so the very first person that shot at it on Saturday morning. Yep. No, sorry, not Saturday morning. Friday. Um, we we were very strict about how you could how you could shoot it because we wanted it to get into the match. We didn't. <clears throat> angles of fire, damaging things and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And the very first person that went down there on Friday in practice session forgot to put their 300 meter dope on and shot it with zero, or like the 100 <laughs> meter zero in a, with a 223. Two, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then proceeded to hit about, 
Oh, the, the, the biz plate that was probably 100 mil above the track. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it nearly got blown apart on the first shot. Yeah, that's the thing to say is, is this was a portable setup. So it wasn't yes. sort of in behind a mound and really, really <clears throat> well protected because yep. it was a temporary setup. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, great great job to have. Andy, you shot the mover stage. Um, I did. It uh, didn't go so well. No. Video coming out about that shortly. Oh, but, I didn't um, hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you enjoy the, the mover? I mean, we're on yep. the mover now, so we'll delve into yeah, that and then we'll yeah, get yeah. to the wider <clears> match. <throat> No, it, it was really good experience. It, it worked really well. Um, just having that different sort of thing you got to think about in terms mm-hmm. of it's the wind going this way, do you have to hold point one this way? And then when it's traveling the other direction, you got to hold point four, point five. It's, yeah, it was very different. Yeah. And, the, and the timing, whether do you try and rattle off three rounds quickly before it gets behind the no shoot or do you let it go in and then come back out? Um, no, it was it was really good. I enjoyed it. I was really it was really quite interesting. On Friday afternoon, it was going a little bit slower, mm-hmm. and everybody was like, "Is this how fast it's going to move in the match?" And like, mm. <laughs> and they're like it's, it's too easy. Like everyone's going to clean it. Yep. You're like, we've just got to add a timer, and yep. maybe you'll have to do something <laughs> instead yeah. of just taking ten shots prone at it. Yep. Just yep. talk to me on Saturday after you've after you shot the first stage, and there was. Some people were like, mm, mm. yeah, so it turns out having like a timer and doing things makes it a little bit more challenging. Yeah, well, I was one of those people. So <coughs> so pretty well the stage was like engage a, a single target at 300 for your first two shots prone and then engage the, the mover for two or three shots. I think two it was shots, two, yep. two shots. Uh, I forgot to do that. So I just shot the, the oh, single target by itself and then moved position to go onto the mover. Oh, instead of, out of position so you got two for the yep. stage. Uh, no, I caught myself and then went yeah. back. And then, but yeah, it's just once you, once you had that timer and, and the pressure, you mm-hmm. just, oh, you just make silly mistakes. Well, that was always the, the theory mm. when we spoke about it in the lead up mm. was Friday was just to get people on a mover in Australia because we haven't done yep. it before. Yep. Saturday was let's get some people hitting it with thinking about a mag change or a slight mm-hmm. position change. And then Sunday was going to be completely off a barricade with moving yeah, quicker nice. and <clears throat> proper mover. Yep. Just try and get that progression so people would be like, I can do this. Oh, that's a bit harder. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, that's we, cool. we didn't quite get to the wow bit, but we, we almost got there. I think it was good. Yeah. yeah. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and so the match overall, Andy, for, a, for yep. a, you know, your second match of the year, how did it go? <laughs> um, me personally? How did, how did the match <laughs> go for you? Did you enjoy no. it? There's yeah. some highlights, some, some no. lowlights. We've got a matchbook there if you want to run through any stages. Yep. Um, that sort of thing. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about it. No, the, ma- the match was ran really well, uh, relatively smoothly, minimal target failures. Um, it was <clears> a very good diverse match as well. So a bit of prone, long range, uh, a bit of tripod stuff, a bit of bipod adjustment on the go. Yep. It, it was definitely versatile where you had to use your equipment in, mm. in different situations, it wasn't strictly all prone, strictly all, you know, one way or the other. So, um, mm. yeah, it was good in that way. And then with your target sizes, they were also very good where um, newer shooters could definitely achieve some points and then targets got smaller and smaller and, and harder to – Very harder quickly. To get. Yeah, yeah, very quickly. So, <laughs> no, I think it was very well um, thought out and designed. Plus you had a, you had a, a sort of a theme in mind for the match. Yeah. Mm. So when I, when I sat down and <clears> – <throat> It was, uh, I was kind of like, what do I want to achieve by writing the match? Like what's, you know, everyone's got their own style or theme. I'm like, what, what is my theme going to be? And it was, um, I like uh, I like people to use the equipment that they bring to the range. Like an example I gave was everyone brings this really fancy tripod to the range mm-hmm. and they put their bon- binoculars or spotter on there and yep. they use it for tripod rear. And then we don't shoot off the top of them. So I was like, well, you know what, we're going to learn to shoot off – <clears throat> shoot off the tripod and you know there was a couple of stages back in the old way before we worked out mm. you can use it as rear support that's right mm. yeah um and there was yeah it's a, essentially it was a gear heavy or not a gear heavy match but you had to use the gear that you brought to the range mm-hmm. and you had to be able to not only so there was no deploy on the clock but you had to you had to be able to adjust it on the clock mm-hmm. was one of the, the things and the people that hadn't practiced that really found out about um mm. you know how hard it can be to you know to change the height of something on the clock when you haven't practiced it mm. Um, so that was really my theme is to get people using their equipment, think about their equipment deployment. And it was always going to be a technical match. I like a technical match. Mm-hmm. Lots of, there was lots of distance changes. There wasn't, was there any stage? Yeah, there was maybe, there was a KOL stage. Two mm-hmm. KOL stages, I think. And a mover. Or, at a single and distance. And a mover. Yeah. At a single distance. Every other stage there was, 
multiple um, distance target engagements on the same stage. So yep. Yep. I was trying to force, I was really trying to force holdovers and people were determined to dial. Yep. Yeah. And not yep. get all their rounds off because of it, perhaps. Yeah, that's maybe maybe what happened. Yep. A bit of a shout out before we get into the stages. Uh, top three, Sean Lawson in third, David Taylor yeah. in second, and Guy Jackson took out his first match. Well, so well done, brilliant. Actually, was it all three of those guys first? Oh, sorry. Well, guys first, definitely podium, but the other, yep, the other two, two guys first podium, yep. which is really good. Absolutely. And, and poor Joel Rinaldi, who finished on the same points, mm. uh, second and third place. It was a three-way tie and then decided, obviously, by school stages. So, yep. uh, yeah, very very tight there mm. and then uh, Ash, Ash one point behind in fifth uh, and then two points well another point behind that Andrew Little hey, hey. hey. six again six again six yeah. again <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the way it was but no congratulations to uh, to all those guys and, uh, and to Guy who took out the series last year without taking out a win and took mm. out, finally he's taken out a win well done mm. and the skill stages this match weren't played all a, cleaned they no. played a massive part in deciding the top order which and was they really were, cool they were you know, the ones we don't commonly see as well which is yeah, nice I, I was determined not to use skills too in the match because yep. we always use skills too because it's e- not easy but it's easy on every range most ranges and have this is, set up yeah. and, and then with some of the skill stages, there's differing target distances to account for different distance ranges. Yes. And this is one of the ones where we could put them out further. So yep. I did. Yep. Yep. And oh, wow. <laughs> like, yeah. wow. Made some changes. Did, yeah. Did it mm. upset? Not upset. Did it just affect how people went? How did you go on one of those skill stages, Andy? One. <laughs> one. Was that a prone, like, um, you know, yeah. 12 shot type stage? So should we dive points? into that one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do, yeah, that. Let's do yeah. that. Let's All do right. that. Yeah. So this skill stage. Uh, Which one was it? Skills uh, three, it was I think. Skills three. Yep. So you got a near, far on the left, uh, hit near, hit far, mag change, hit far, hit near, and then you transition to a box and you shoot larger targets, same distances, same sort of order. You'll figure it I out. I think it's about 350 and 550, I think, with yep. a meter distances. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, what I probably should have learned from spotting the previous stage and spotting people on that stage was there was a tendency with the Mirage – that everyone was hitting low, mm-hmm. a large tendency. And I should have caught on to that and I didn't. And I sent 11 rounds <laughs> <laughs> uh, about 2.2 2 low into the dirt. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I watched all of those rounds going to the dirt through your spotter. <laughs> Very clearly. The trace was amazing. <laughs> Andy, you lied. You got two points on that one. Yeah. Oh, oh you got I? stuck on the far one, yeah. Yep. There you go. There you go. Maybe you did the mag change. That's what I mean. I did the mag. Yeah. Maybe I got the mag change and I couldn't. Get it back. Get back. Six people were uh, top scored on that one. Uh, sorry, not uh, uh, cleaned it. And uh, shout out to Phil Lou for, uh, mm. for oh, top well scoring yeah. and top yeah. time. He, he took out semi pro, didn't he? Yeah. I think uh, he did. He did very well. Yes, yeah. he did. Absolutely. Um, right. Very yeah. good. That was a, yeah. So it was a really interesting it, stage to watch from a you know a spotting point of view. And it was. Yeah. I watched. You you went left right. And everything in between of the target, but mm. never changed your elevation once. No, because I, I was seeing, I was seeing, well, Mirage. I was seeing Mirage go left to right, and then I was seeing it go a bit right to left. So I was like, well, I'll try further left and I'll try further right. And not yeah. once did I think maybe I should hold higher because everyone else is trending low. <laughs> that would be silly. The, the, I think the, the, the trick, not the trick, but the, mm. the issue was that you couldn't see the base of the, um, the target, mm. um, and you couldn't see where your projectiles were landing when they missed, no. yep. and but you could see them skipping up the mound. Mm. So a lot of people thought they were going oh, high right. or getting like they're like, I'm yes. getting an edge hit, I'm We've getting had, an edge hit, and yeah. then had that at Mildura, yeah, and then yeah. we were sort of like, you're definitely not getting an edge hit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if you call the post at the bottom an edge hit, yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was about a 550 meter target, and then the burn was at 600, so yeah, hit the ground and <clears> skip up, yeah, or definitely. you'd hit a little bit low on the berm and the dust would kick up as if it was left or right of the target. Yeah, the, the comical yes. thing for me was mm. watching it. it. was I was a little bit surprised and then I I know that's a thing that happens in wheelchairs. I'm like, okay, someone will work it out and everyone will work it out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what else could they be doing like to maybe help here? And there's this ginormous square plate that didn't have a single mark on it <laughs> about half a metre to the right. Yeah. I was like, surely somebody's going to shoot that and see where they're going and then go back, nope. 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 That's, did that. that's not the target we're shooting at, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm, fair enough. But fair anyway, enough. do a bit of research on Mirage and refraction and all that sort of thing and there's, it's there's interesting. A, there's mm. a weird condition that happens there where mm. I don't fully understand it but I, I know the outcome is um, it trends low or it, it's not where it seems to be and you shoot low and Monado does the same thing on mm. that same left-hand side of the range where you've got the big long open space. At right. times, not all yep. the time, yep. um, but there's two ranges I've seen that happen at now. Mm. Mm. Um, it's a bit, 
bit odd. Mm. Absolutely. What was your favourite stage, uh, Andy? Um, I do tend to like the longer stages where it uses multiple pieces of equipment and you have to figure out where you're going to put your stuff and how you're going to run your gear. So I think that was run what you run what you brung. Give us a give us a rundown on that one um, with what you brung. If I can find it. There it is. There it is. All right, 180 seconds. Mm-hmm. So what's that, three minutes? Mm-hmm. That's a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> So we had 15 rounds, so you're throwing in a mag change there. It's uh, everything you brought to the firing line. Uh, so this included two shooting bags, mm-hmm. uh, a tripod, a bipod, two. or two bipods. Yep. Tripods. Trip- oh, two tripods. Right. A bi- bipod. Two, two <laughs> bipods probably wouldn't help a lot. No. <laughs> one in the front, one in the back. Um, and then yeah. you could also use one side. <laughs> your backpack. So two shooting bags plus backpack. Yep. Um, so there were multiple shooting positions uh, out of a, a timber frame and then there was a sort of a tree branch as a barricade. So, mm-hmm. um, And then there was a tire you had to shoot off, uh, shoot over prone. So, yep. yeah, essentially some of these positions you had to shoot over or through or you could rest on the barricade and it was up to you to figure out which piece of equipment you're going to use in what spot. Um, and then continue to shoot a... Uh, let's have a look, a 300 metre target, a 260 metre target and a 200 metre target. So there was a fair bit of transition. Uh, I did see people, like you said, dialing for every shot and I was thinking there's no way you're going to have enough time. time. For 15 dials, no. No, so I was definitely holding over for all of them. Um, Smart man. And the, tar- no, the, target the, sizes were, <laughs> the target sizes were a little bit sporty This one well. went well for me. Yeah. I think Josh this why it was your favorite? may have – Filmed it, but he hasn't prepped it. That's fine. It's not on the screen, mate, so it never happened. Whatever, mate. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't edit it. All right. That's fine. Um, Do I need to go through the whole brief? Uh, So once you use a piece of equipment in a certain certain spot, you can't Mm -hmm. reuse that piece of equipment in another spot. I think more importantly, once you place the piece of equipment in the spot and then you picked up, so you put your rifle down Mm. and you placed all of your pieces of equipment where you wanted to use them. Mm. As soon as you grabbed your rifle again and went to use the first piece of equipment, that was it. Your ability to move equipment was gone. Yep, yep. So you had to you were you were punished if you made a mistake. Yeah, and essentially, so it came into that stage preparation and planning. Like, yep. Yeah, pre-stage planning. So, um, I did rather well. I think I got fifteen on that one. You certainly did, as mm. well as Guy Jackson, uh, Nick Noski, and Dave Taylor. Uh, there's yep. only four people who cleaned that one. Yeah, um, so, so definitely cleanable. But yep. um, yeah, lots of uh, variety in scores. Yep. Um, I looked, I through, did, I looked yeah. through that stage and I was like, oh, wow, there's a good spread there. Mm. No one who was there on the day donated. Yeah. Oh, no, someone, someone, someone even got an impact off a Powerade bottle. Yes. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, they yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> they might have been lacking a bit of gear and yep. used, they used a Powerade bottle. They were, they were offered and, equipment and a stubby cooler. Yep. Um, they were offered <laughs> equipment and they are like, you know what? Nope. This is what I bought. This is what I'm going to use and I'm going to get an impact. <laughs> good on them. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. It was, it was, it was great. This was also the stage that um, Jane Jackson was shooting and the target malfunctioned and oh, she got a reshoot. Well, you're going to go there. She, she got <laughs> two, had 2.8 seconds to get one shot off. Two got point, it in 2.7. 2.81 two, 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 two seconds, two point, Josh. Okay, 2.81. What, what did Jane's new husband mention about that? Don't know. I didn't see it. No, didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> There was if I was good at this, I'd be like, and here's the video. <laughs> but, uh, I wasn't. There was, yeah, congratulations, Jane. That was, a, very uh, well. was a solid yes. uh, solid shot getting that one off. Mm. So, uh, yeah, good job. Good job. Very good. Uh, mm. Any other stages that stood out to you, Andy? Or Plushy, is there a stage you wish you could have shot under comp conditions? Uh, yeah, I was – so I rocked up to the range. And this is not a range that I've run a match at before. Mm-hmm. I've shot there before. I mean, I packed all of the stuff I thought I was going to need yep. on a trailer and we drove. Or well, I drove. Rocked up, got all my barricades out and then placed them where I want them. I'm like, oh, these aren't quite going to work how I want them to work. Mm. So You want to solve the range. Yeah, quite a bit of, yeah, there's baffles that you have to shoot under or over, mostly under. Um, definitely under, <laughs> actually. <laughs> completely uh, under. Yeah, yes. <laughs> completely under. And yeah. I had some of the heights, but I didn't have the lower heights and then things started to get in the way when we started putting rifles on there and stuff. So I spent... What did I get on Tuesday? And I spent mm-hmm. an entire day modifying barricades <laughs> yep. um, to, to make it work on that range. And then I had to change some of the order of the stages up um, to make it work. Mm. And then I had to pair a couple of stages together that I didn't want to, but I was forced to with the two tripod stages. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. And they weren't shot exactly where I wanted them to be shot from. I like how you said uh, to me, like, I don't want to put these two stages together because they will break people. Yeah. 
And they broke people. They definitely <laughs> yeah. broke people. Um, tough stages next to each other back to back. They yeah. were, yeah. They were definitely designed to be tough. And I had to cut some time out of one and I didn't cut any impacts out of it, mm. which made it. No, which, no, people cut their own impacts out yeah, of it. Yeah, they the definitely worry. did. I mean, you, took, I, you should have cut some shots out of it. I'm also, I, but on that, I like, I don't hate the idea of a single unachievable stage where you can't possibly yep. get all your rounds off because yep. it makes you choose. Um, Am I going to go for it and maybe burn all my shots and not get many impacts? Or am I just going to say, well, I can only get eight of my 12 shots off mm. and I'm going to get eight good shots and I'm going to get eight impacts. Mm-hmm. If you make the wrong decision, it, you know, it can burn you, which is kind of the theme of the match. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, but so I'm, I, sure, I I'm sure if you had, yeah, if you, if you were writing it differently and worked out they were next to each other, you would have probably dropped a few rounds in, in with some preparation. I think it was just a time thing. And then yeah. you threw the, the mover on top, which also took up a lot of my time. It did, yeah. Um, it was just a little bit of refinement that I didn't get there in time. Mm. Um, and that is unlikely to happen again, that's for sure. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a list of things that worked well and didn't work well, and I'm, I'm happy to take that on board. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, I, kn- I know what, what work, running a match at a range that is – you can't just pop down to, yeah. uh, you can't even go to for a day because it's a good 10 hour round trip yep. to get to. You're going there for you know, a few days in front of mm. setting it up and hoping you've got everything you needed and it's yeah, all that's done correctly. Right. Yeah. So there were probably the only two stages where I was like, I really didn't want to run those together because they, mm. they were meant to be tough stages. Mm. I wanted people to walk away going, I need to learn how to use my tripod mm. um, and shoot off my tripod. And then having those two back to back was just... <laughs> I felt so bad for people on Saturday morning. <laughs> like the, everyone was so demoralised, but it, it is what it is. It was the same for everybody. It was good. Um, <laughs> Andy enjoyed it. Yeah, Andy did well. Yeah, yeah. Um, good. No, they were they were the only ones that I I, would, yeah. I didn't love where they were. Um, apart from that, I was relatively happy. Okay. Mm. Well, touching on those tripods, I saw well, we had a little discussion after I'd shot mine, and you were surprised that I was clipping in, clipping into my tripod. And where other people, there was, so there was a stage where it was shooting off a bench with the, a bipod and a rear bag, and mm-hmm. then you had to clip into your tripod, shoot yep. a target, and then you're transitioning back and forth, so clipping in, clipping out. And you were sort of thinking along the lines of, you should run two bags. Yeah, absolutely. Or, and then just no, use a bag no, on No tripod. bipod. Yeah. Yeah, bag yeah. on the tripod, bag yeah. on the bench. Yeah, and not clip in. Yeah. So that's that's how you'd run it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I definitely chose to clip in, and I obviously – practice with the tripod and I didn't find too much of a it was slowing me down or holding me back Interesting. But, you definitely yeah. get better feedback when you're clipped in yep definitely but, yeah. yeah yeah I think and then on the other one the um the one we had to shoot through the pipes which mm. was I think do you even tripod um the the shooters had to shoot through five different pipes the 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 rifle was all it was designed so if you set your rifle at the correct height you didn't have to adjust the height of the tripod but you had to move the tripod around things mm-hmm which wasn't necessarily intentional, but it's how it worked out. Mm. Um, and that one, a lot of people didn't clip in, which really surprised me because there was no <clears> – if you clipped your rifle into your tripod, you had one thing to move. Yeah. Yep. But then because people ran bags, they had a tripod, a bag, and a rifle to move, and it was just clumsy. Yeah. Mm. By the time they got it set up, and it was two shots per target on that one. Yep. So you had the opportunity for your, your second follow-up shot was much quicker and better feedback off the first shot. So it was – Watching people run some of the stages, you're like, that's not how I would have done it mm-hmm. and maybe not how I designed it. So it was, it was interesting watching everybody do it. Well, I, I even noticed that from coming oh, along. Oh, Josh is here. Helping. Sorry. Oh, I'm still here, guys. Yeah, I'm still sorry. here. <laughs> um, coming along and helping on the uh, Wednesday, doing a bit more of the helping and rather than filming and getting behind some of those stages, actually, you know, playing with a rifle, moving around, getting comfy. There's ways that you went, cool, this is really really stable, really achievable. And then watching people throughout the weekend and go, no one's done this. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. No one has done that. But yet that is an absolute rock solid position where you don't need to move Yep. really at all. Yeah. You just need to move yourself. <clears throat> you can leave the gun and it's going to stay there on target. Well, we, that was Rufy's KYL. We had to shoot off two different rooftops. Mm-hmm. We redesigned and rebuilt the, re- rebuilt the barricade on Thursday or Wednesday, whatever day it was. So you could stick your tripod at the front and one bipod, bag. Bipod. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'll work better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your bipod at the front and a bag at the back. And you could shoot six six shots from a modified prone position. Mm. Yep. And I saw one person do it. Mm. And everyone went bags. And it was it was interesting because some yeah. of those sh- stages we did get to shoot. Um, 
the wind was up. It was 25, 30 k's an hour, and it was mirage and it yep. wasn't it wasn't good shooting condition, conditions. And in those positions, we were smacking the targets. Mm. Like even the little KYLs at 600, which nobody shot. Mm-hmm. Like this is achievable. Somebody will clean this. Well, maybe not clean because the last four shots were designed to be difficult. But mm. like people will get six from six in this position and move on to the next one. And that just I don't think anyone got six from six. Mm. Yeah, right. No. It's really interesting what happens when the old timer goes beep. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Throws everyone out. Absolutely. Very good. Anything else to uh, – Andy, I think you're um, – if you ever write an uh, autobiography, it's going to be called Six. Yeah. Mm. We'll in a How New Zealand m- accent. Six from six? <laughs> How many matches have you finished sixth in? I don't know, but we should look into it. Hopefully it's six or more. <laughs> yeah. Someone <laughs> find yeah, out. Theory. When he gets six sixths, six he gets six five fifths. fifths and four fourths. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll aim for that. Just – Progressively get better. If you can do that by the end of the season, I'll be impressed. <laughs> There's not enough not matches. Enough matches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very impressed. One one month. Mm. <laughs> um, one other stage, mm. which you don't see too often because a lot of clubs don't have these type of targets, but donuts. <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain that, was, that one? That was one of your targets. Yeah, I know. But. One of. <laughs> so the theory or the, the stage was, hang on, let's read this. You, you, yeah. you kept talking about these targets, these mm. donut targets, and I didn't ever see what they were until we got them at the end. We went and, and grabbed them. And I looked at them like, oh, they're bullseye targets. Yeah, bulls, yeah donut, yeah. bullseye yeah. targets. Donut targets. Yeah. Donuts. Donuts what you get when you when you score zero and you get to eat one. You've earned yourself a donut. Anyway. <laughs> they're also <laughs> approximately the same shape as a donut. <laughs> approximately. <laughs> approximately, yeah. 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 Definitely not the same shape as a stopey pole. <laughs> True. So uh, 105 seconds, 10 rounds, unlimited equipment. The targets were a, a 475 millimeter gong mm-hmm. at 343 millimeters with a 170 mil donut, uh, and a 560 millimeter gong at 608 meters with a 130 millimeter donut. So the shooter, shooter starts port arms mag inserted on the start signal. The shooter is to move to the prone position and engage the near target until hit. Shooter then engages the far target until hit, and then there was. Uh, five positions and they just transition across the positions after two shots. So this is the thing that's starting to come into PRS matches too, I've noticed, where we have hit to move on the target but uh, shoot to move on the positions. Mm-hmm. So meaning that there was five positions, two shots per position. So you had to move position five times. Mm-hmm. But if you couldn't hit anything, you stay on the biggest or the you yeah. know, the first the yeah. first target. Mm. Um I, th- I think that's good. It adds a level of complexity. Yeah, it does, and it keeps. It's a good way of getting the newer shooters some impacts as well, because they're staying on potentially the easier targets. Sure. Yeah. Um, so the theory was that you can you've got a hole in the middle of the target. So what do you, what are you going to do? How do you approach that? I saw lots of projectiles go straight through the middle. Yeah. So mm. my my theory was that it's it it's a, you have to quarter the target. You can yes. either so you can either shoot high or low. In, if anybody ever does this again, shoot low because there's bolts up high. Just saying. It's, 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 it's the same, ma- it's the same size the on the, the, the top as the bottom. Yeah. So and, can, and it will swing, probably give you a bit more feedback. You've got, yes. you've got bolts up the top you could hit. Oh. Yeah. And that's more surface area. <laughs> <laughs> no. it, what um, it is, you well, can't tell me I'm wrong. Wings for the years. No, yeah. you don't because they were both within the within the donut. There wasn't <coughs> the extra tab for the bolt holes. No, but the, the bolts give you more surface area. because yeah, there's target right behind it if the bolt's not there. Down the bottom, for example. No, but there's there's more yeah, there's no, there's no, the edges no, of the bolt. No. They give you more surface if, if area. If you hit, didn't hit the edge of the bolt, it would just hit the target. Yeah. Yeah. No. See? Yeah, better. Oh, but I'm not incorrect. <laughs> sure. Anyway, I'm tempted just to start fading this argument now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can either choose. Where's that applause button? <laughs> if you're if you're confident that your rifle is, if you're confident your rifle is good for waterline being elevation, mm-hmm. you can choose to have a bit more wind error. Yes. You meaning you shoot top or bottom? Yep. Always bottom. Um, if you're not so Unless confident, you want more surface area. If you if you're not uh, if you're not so confident of your rifle's elevation, you can choose to shoot on the left or the right, which gives you more elevation but yes. less wind error. Yep. So it's it's you can make the target work for wherever your weakness is. Correct. Yeah. So yep. Unless it's your weakness is like round. Yeah. Um, so there was watching, looking the impacts on those targets uh, at the end of the day was lo- quite quite interesting. Centralized yeah. were they like on on either side? Uh, lots of lots of edge hits in the center. Yeah, because okay. yeah. you have got a sharp edge, you can see where the little dings are where they've hit. Mm-hmm. It was a lot more than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah, my yeah. my game plan for those sort of donut targets is uh, center center punch. 
centre punch rely on your inaccuracy and your poor fundamentals <laughs> to, hit, to hit an edge. <laughs> that, that, that explains why he did so well. <laughs> How did you um, find that one, Andy? I can't remember, but um, I'm sure we'll find it. What, um, what was it called? Donuts. Oh, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> what did you get up with donuts? Yeah. I don't know. Um, but my sort of game plan was wind dependent. So if it was not windy and like I saw a lot of boil, I would mm-hmm. go for the left or the right, yep. give myself the height ele- uh, the height error um, room, whatever you want to call it. And you then got it- six and there was a uh, high score was nine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not too bad. Yeah. Um, get six again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then the, you know. 18th the- actually. Three times six. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, if the wind picks up, I would aim for the top. Okay. Bottom. It's, a bit <laughs> bottom. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost a bit of a twist on a hostage target. Yeah. Where there's a bit of the target you can't shoot. Mm. Um, and how are you going to yep. you gonna overcome that? Yep. And it's more acceptable for the type of ranges that we shoot on because I don't think we're allowed to do hostage targets. Probably not. Shoot, no shoot. I think you can do shoot, no do. shoot. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's probably a little bit fairer than like a fox target where you got the legs down the bottom where it's sort of like sporadic whether you hit that or not. Yeah. At least with the with the round target with a hole in the middle, you can sort of uh, – you've got a – wherever you can hit, you've got a good amount. You've got an even amount yep. of target to hit on. Yep. So, yeah, that was uh, that was good. Have you got one more one more match, uh, one more stage to run through? Uh, any? Yeah, I, like, I really liked any porthole as the girl. Okay. Yep. Not just because of the stage name. <laughs> um, so it was really simple stage to set up. So the, the theory behind it was that there was five portholes being about 250 millimetre square and they were different heights of your bipod. So my, uh, my intention was that you had to have three different bipod heights to, to get all of your shots off. Yep. Knowing that you could you could set your rifle up for the first one off the clock. Yep. That meant you had to do two bipod height adjustments on the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, I think it was uh, fixed. Oh, this was controversial. So there were the targets were fixed depending on the porthole, but you could shoot the portholes in any order. Right. So people definitely didn't get that, and they definitely oh, gotcha. shot the targets in the order they thought they had to be shot in, but it wasn't the order. And there was some there was some fireworks. Cool. Uh, yes, there was. We had a we had a really good stage officer on that thing, mm. and he just doesn't give you anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like bad luck. I told you, there's a map. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah, well, there was there was some there was some interesting conversations on that stage, but the uh, changing, you put that very politely. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> but. People, I watched good shooters fall to pieces on that stage, mm-hmm. just having to adjust their bipod on the clock. Yep. Um, we really struggled with it. Well, uh, speaking of putting things politely, Andy, you didn't win that stage. Um, <laughs> you came second, actually. You got nine points. You're the only one Ooh. on nine. The only person, no, that's, a, no, that's premature. <laughs> um, how many rounds was it? It's ten? Yep. Yeah, the only person to clean that stage, Kai Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there well we go. done, guy. There we go. Ten. Uh, yep. Nine for you, Andy. Yep. And then there was a there was a whole swag of names on eight, so I won't read them out. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I, I enjoyed it. It was just that single last position that stuffed me over because it was, <clears throat> it was a high it was a high bipod bipods at full extension. Yep. Your bag wouldn't intentionally your bag wouldn't touch the ground and your your, your rear bag. Yeah. Your rear bag. Yeah. Yep. You couldn't use your rear bag. You had to get up on your elbows yep. and lock your rifle into yep. your shoulder. And and that was no problems. And I was like, I've got this. I've got the skypod. I've got the extension. It's all sorted. Threw those legs out, got behind it, and then I was like, huh, eh, there's a baffle there. <laughs> <laughs> that yep. was – it was actually really um, – it took me a little while to come up with the concept. Yep. But setting that stage up was the easiest of yeah. just about the stage of the weekend because there was a bit of core flute and I cut five holes in it. Yeah. And I was just <laughs> – when I marked the holes out, I was like, okay, so I knew that I had to have like one position that you could use one time mm-hmm. and another one that could be used for two. And then there was like some teasing heights in there where you're like yep. – I can do this without adjusting my bipod, but you couldn't. Yeah, and so you right. pe- see people go across and they're like, ah, I've got to change it. And yep. it was, yeah. Because you either can't see you through your scope or your barrel's too low. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's it. True. Very good. All right, gentlemen. Well, in the, uh, the wrap-up of the barrel's code still open, uh, uh, I have thought of a challenge. Uh, for us, that's good because uh, we didn't. Show. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> look, it's a bit of a gimme. It's an easy get, but we've uh, we've talked about you know we, this particular match. We've had a uh, we've had shooting PRS type style, but we need to bring this old school back to the way we used to do it. Mm. So we're going to uh, bring a hunting challenge in. Uh, so next podcast, prior to the podcast, 
four of us are going to shoot Big Buck Hunter and we're going to see who his top scores on Big Buck Hunter and then cool. that will be the challenge. And then I think uh, we got a – oh, Josh, did you look up what the uh, the award for winning the challenge was? Yeah, I did. Oh. And um, we, we didn't come up with anything we said we would after. <laughs> <laughs> so the award is Josh has to buy all the drinks at I the next it was <laughs> Yeah, I vaguely remember drinks. I yeah. thought it was that whoever wins the last match gets to get themselves a new car. So that works out really conveniently. Is this then. funded by the podcast? No, that'd be convenient. It is definitely not. <laughs> what about, well, what in, a about really round, in a really roundabout way, it sort of is funded by the podcast. Uh, <laughs> very, have that paycheck. <laughs> a very loose description of how we do it. Uh, and then the uh, the big ha- buck hunter. Um, yep. Uh, your, your name goes on the machine? I don't know. Yeah, we'll I don't figure know. it out. No, 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 that's the problem we had last time. No, we we have to figure it out now. We, we will figure it out prior to actually doing it on the night. That seems smart. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Do that. and we'll film it. That will be uh, <laughs> that will be very good. Yes, or we will. We could tie it into. Oh, here we go. The, the loser has to wear something go karting in. No, no, oh. no, no, no. Here we go. <laughs> Whoever wins doesn't have to pay for go karting. The other three will cover oh, yeah. their their entry. That's not. It's not that's, a crazy. That's amount. acceptable. That's acceptable. Yeah. Okay, only for the only for the amount of rounds that we go on as the competition. So if we're going to go for three races, which is probably fair, then they, those three races are covered. If that person wants to run thirteen times, they can pay for the other ten. All right. Fair enough. Cool. All right. Cool. Let's go get practicing on big buckets. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds good, yep. uh, guys. For those who are watching uh, live, you may not know, but we hang around on here for another ten minutes or so after the show and chat and answer questions and do that sort of thing. So, if you are watching anything live, uh, stay tuned. If you're watching on the uh, on the podcast or listening on the uh, the podcast, uh, we will catch up with you guys next time and uh, make sure you tune live sometime. Cool. Cheers, guys. Cheers. See you later. <laughs>